HMU Hall 2 IIT B. Just already I said that this is a Java server page. So, okay, what is the main thing for using a JSP is that supposed to create a dynamic page. But then with HTML itself we can create a web page. But the, the limitation is that we cannot have dynamic content. Whatever the content you have posted in HTML, it will be static. If you want to dynamically change the content, if you want to update some data. So, we have to use server page. So, now we are using a JSP. Okay. Then what is actually the JSP is that it is a mixing of HTML as well as Java. We have a object oriented programming Java. How to post those code in a web web application. So, that is why we are going for JSP. Okay. Then if you want to post the Java code in JSP page, we have to use a special tag. Okay. With help of this tag, we can directly use our Java code inside the JSP page. Okay. Then it, the, obviously, the page supposed to be extension with dot JSP. Okay. Then okay. Uh, in JSP, when, when you are running the JSP page, it is not directly compiled as a JSP page. Okay. What is happening? Just I will I will show you the environment of JSP. Okay. We have a JSP page. When your browser requests for any JSP page, what is happening? The two thing is happening over there. If the page JSP page does not have any Java code, it is like a ordinary HTML. So, it is a static content. It is directly goes to the browser again. It is going to response to the browser. If the, con the page have a dynamic content, if there is a Java code, it will goes to the Java translator, then it, it will be translate to servlet. Okay. What is the servlet? It is a Java class with the main feature of request and response of the particular client or server. Okay. So, that is a feature of servlet. So, what will happen? The JSP page will be converted into servlet. Again, the servlet will be is a ordinary Java. We can compile that one as a class file. Then, we can post the data into the browser. Okay. This is a environment of JSP. Okay. Then, already I said that if you want to directly post the Java code in your JSP, we have to use the special tag. We have a three special tag to use our Java code. The first one is a expression. Expression we knows. If you want to simply assign the variable, we want to use the simple variables to your JSP page, we can use the first one. Okay. Then we have to use the percentage equal. Okay. Then when you go for code, if you want to use the direct code, for example, if you, if you want to use the conditional statement or for loop, while loop, if you want to use any any the feature of Java, directly we have to use only the percentage, directly we can use the code. Okay. Then the third one, the second one that is we can call it as a scriptlet. Okay. The third one is a declaration. What is a declaration? So, if you want to use the any variable you want to declare the globally, we can use. In second part, we have a the code part. In code part itself, we can able to declare the variable. The difference over there. The first one, whatever that you are declare in a code, it is a local. If you want to declare any variable as a global one, we have to use declaration. That is a percentage semicolon. Sorry, percentage with explanation. Sorry. Then not only variable, we can use the method in declaration part. Simply we can declare a method, the further we can invoke the particular method for our code. Okay. This is a Java tags. I will show you the example. Is that is it visible now? The code green color. Okay. Oh fine. Now it is a simple HTML. I have displayed the current date. Already you knows what is that? Java 
it will dot date. What it will do? It is a one predefined method available in Java, comes under utility package. So, I am directly using that. So, what I am doing? The value whatever it is taking as a date, it will be assigned to the page. So, I am using a, what I am using now? Which tag? Expression. Okay. Okay. So, it is in a variable assignment. So, I am using a expression. Then, we if for in ordinary Java, what we will do? If you, are, if you want to use any predefined methods comes under any packages, what you will do? We have to import those package, then we have to use directly the method. This is the way we are using in Java. Why not we are using here? We can use. We have some other tag like import the packages. So, let me discuss this in future slides. By the way, I like to give a demo for each and every code. It is okay. It's it is okay for you, but the code I already have uh, implemented here. Just I, simply I will show, then I will explain, then I will run. Okay, the same code. Okay, we have written. Simply we are using the predefined method of Java. Okay, so I running this one. What will happen? Simply it will be display the content, then. the current date. Okay. Now, we are going to see the second JSP tag that is a scriptlet. In a scriptlet, when you are using a scriptlet, we can use the scriptlet as a direct Java code we can insert in your JSP page. Okay. So, not only directly for we there is no restriction for using the sequence of Java and HTML code. We can mix both of them. Here, just look at this code. What what I am doing? Just simply, I am using a if else statement. But in between if else statement, I am using a what is, what I am using? Sorry, in this one I am directly using a the Java. I am not using a mixing of HTML as well as the Java. But we, there is no restriction for using mixing of JSP as well as Java code. Okay. So what what actually this code will do? I am using a random method. What will do? Random method will generate the some random value. The floating random value it will display less than one. So I am checking whether the value is less than zero point five. It will display have a nice day. Else it will display have a good day. Refreshing this page, what will happen? It is a random. So, sometime it will be same, sometime it will be differ based on the random value. Okay. Okay. Here, what I am doing? Simply, I have used the direct Java code into your JSP page. Okay. I try to use mixing of HTML and the HTML tag as well as Java code. How it is possible? Yeah, I will make. I will do some changes with this code. You came to know how to how we can mix both of the thing. Okay, the first line, it is a Java code. So I have added that line in a scriptlet. The second line, I'm going to use instead of this, I'm going to use a ordinary HTML, H1. Then, this HTML, there is no need for adding this line in a scriptlet. If you go for third line, what is the third line? It belongs to Java. So, we have to add this code in a scriptlet. Then the fourth line is belongs to Java. 
you have any problem with understanding of this lines. No, no. So, now what I have done? Previously, I have used the only Java code, but here I have mixed both Java and HTML. So, it is possible. So, now I am the same page I am running over here. That is a scriptlet. So, scriptlet simply we can have a we can add the Java code in our JSP page. Not there is no restriction for the sequence of using Java code as well as HTML code. Okay, next one, declaration. So, declaration. If you want to declare any variable, we can declare using the declaration tag. The declaration, the main thing is that it is a whatever you declare, we can use that particular variable entire in entire pages. There is a global ones. Okay. I have declared a one global variable that is a integer that is a access count. Okay. So, simply I am going to just display the, the visiting visitors count, how many times the visitor is visiting the particular web page. Okay. If the for initially, we have globally declared that and we have initialized the value as 0. When the visitor is visiting a first time, it shows you are welcome to, yeah, welcome to our website. Else, if the already the visitor is visited, so it will give the information you have visited this much time. Okay. So, first time I am visiting this page okay when i am refresh so it goes to the second time okay so likewise the count will be increment okay when it will be goes to the first state when you are restart your server so it means that all your data so where the particular data will be there the global declaration everything will be there. where it will be in your system memories okay like cookies those kind of catch so if you when you are restarting your server so what will happen all the data will be just resetted again it will goes to starting stage okay so when you are restart your server it will goes to the initial stage okay. next one is the jsp command what is a command what is the need of using command for developer purpose they want to give some explanation about your your own code. That is a command. Okay, we can use command in HTML. We already we we can use command. What is the way we can use the command? The first one. Okay, if you are mention your command in the explanation the re, with the HTML. If you, I will show you the difference between how the way of using HTML command as well as JSP command. If you are using a HTML command, the command will be shown in your browser. Whether it will show in browser? Source code. So, in HTML or all the web pages, we can see the source code. So, when you are look at the source code of the particular page, whatever the HTML command you have mentioned, it will be displayed in your source code. If you are mentioned in JSP command, it will not visible. I have in this page itself we have two commands. Okay, the first line. Hi, this is JS commands. The second one, I have written some code over here. Okay, so there is a two commands I have used in the same page. Okay, just go to the this page. If you go to the page source, what is happening? We can able to view the HTML command. So, that is the difference between HTML command and JSP command. When you want to, the command supposed to be not visible to the 
client, we have to use JSP command. Next one is the directory. So, already we, I said that if you want to use directly the predefined method, we have to import those package. If you want to import any packages, we have to use directives. Okay. Directives, we can add the predefined packages. Then under this package, whatever the method you have, we can directly use it in your page. Okay. That is a way of using directives. So, simply that we have to add, add, then page, we have to mention a keyword is page, then another attribute is that imports, then we have to mention a particular package within a double quotes. Okay. Another one is the include directives. The first one, it is directives is going to import your package. In this, this one also comes under directives, but this one include your web page or your already you have developed any pages. For example, what we will, what we will do, we have developing a uh, 10 or 50 number of pages for a particular website. All the website, we, ma we want to use the same header. What we have to do? What, do we, what we have to do? Yeah, simply the header file we have to create separately. The header file supposed to include in all the pages. No need to recreate the particular tags again and again. So, that is the feature of using includes. Okay. This is the header file I have used. Okay. In this header file, there is a content. Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, then summer internship 2012. Okay. For example, if I am running this page, what will happen? It will display the particular header information. I want to use the same template in all the page header. So, simply we have to include this tag over your necessary pages. For example, I have used scriptlet. Okay. In scriptlet, I want to add. What I have done? Simply, I have added the header files in your scriptlet JSP. Okay. When I am running this page, previously, what what was displayed? Have a nice day. Okay. Now it is display with headers. Okay. That is a feature of using include. Next one, that is the action tag. So, what are the features we have in the includes, the directives, the same feature we can have in another format that is called action tags. For, if you want to include the same page, we can use in action tag also. The action tag, it start with JSP colon. What is the action going to perform? For example, uh, if you want to include the same format, JSP colon includes the page which one you want to include as a header, you want to include here. The same way, if you want to the redirect the page to some other page. So, for that we have another action tag that is called forward. Simply we have to mention a JSP colon forward the where you want to forward. Okay. Okay, that is the action tag. Then, if you want to use, there is a another features like if you want in action tag itself, we want to add the, we can pass the parameter. What is the parameter? For example, I am I am just I am transferring my URL to some other. For example, with Google. Okay. At the time of transferring to Google, I want to pass some parameter for searching the particular keyword. So we can able to pass those parameter with values. So for that we have to use JSP param action. Inside that we want to add this tag JSP param. We have to mention 
two things. One is the name, another one is the value. Okay. So, for example, if you want to Google search, directly we want to go to the particular search page. What we have to do? Simply, we have to go for google.co.in, question mark, then search equal to particular keyword. If you are giving like this, what will happen? Directly, the what the value you have mentioned, it will goes to the particular search result page. Okay. So, likewise, we can forward as a resulting page. Next one is the JSP, the implicit objects. We have lot of implicit object in JSP. The JSP page, by default, we have a request response already we it is added in your JSP. So, with the help of the request response, we have lot of the implicit objects are there. The first one is a request. What is the request? When the client requesting any data. So, that is a request. For example, if you have one page, for example, you take it as a Google. Okay. So, what will happen? In a, the home page of Google, we have a search text box is there. If you are enter any data, you are pressing the button search, what will happen? The data, whatever you are searched in a search te text box, it will goes to the another page. That value that is called as a request parameter. Okay. What is the response? And another one is a response. When you want to send back the result for the particular request, we can use response parameter. Okay. Another one is a session. Whether we need to use session, where we are using session? Huh? Validate, logout. If you go for any uh, email services, Google, Gmail, Yahoo, what will happen? When you are login, we can view the mail list, inbox, send items, everything. When you are pressing a logout, whether it is possible to again you go to the same page without login? No, it is not possible. So, it means that your session is destroyed, it is expired. So, likewise, when you want to maintain a session, we have to use session objects. Okay. Another one is the fourth one is the out. So, out is like a print statement. When you want to print the particular statement in your browser, we can use out. Then, application. Anybody heard about application? What is up? That is an application object is there. The application object, there is a facility to have the particular attributes over all the pages. Okay. Like, what, how we are using in a session. I will give you the difference of session and application. Okay. The session, if you are set, for example, if you are login. Okay. For example, you have login as a name, first name and password. Okay. For the particular first name, your password or value will be set and then the based on your username, session will be created. The particular session will be valid for the particular user. So, the particular value, the session value is only available for limitations of users, but application variable, it is not like that. It will be common for all the user. Whatever the value it is available in application object, we can, anyone can use that object. That is a, when you want to use all the pages for the particular value, we can use application objects. Okay. Then exception. Here JSP page itself, we can have a exception information. For example, if you are searching any pages, the page is not found. So, you want to transmit or you want to give some information belongs to the particular exception. We can use exception object to show the information of the particular exception. Okay. This is the implicit objects. Okay, I have given us some sample examples. Okay, for if you take this a request, what is the request? When you are clients giving any passing parameter to another page, that data is considered as a requesting parameter. Okay. The first one, what I have done in a, anyone knows the action tag? What is the action tag? Sorry, anchor tag. It will redirect to some other URL or some other location. That is the anchor tag. In anchor tag, I have mentioned one file, JSP file with some parameter with values. Okay. When you are pressing the particular link, what will happen? The data also going to pass. So, we can retrieve that parameters 
as a query string. Okay. So, the request of the help of request object, we can get the query string. Okay. Then another one, if you have a text field, if you have a form in your HTML page or JSP page, we have a form. Inside the form, if you have a text field, if you want to, when you are submitting the button, the form data will be sent to your next page. So, at the time, if you want to take the particular text field value, we can get as a with the help of request, sorry, sorry, yeah, request, request dot get, sorry, yeah, get parameter, okay. We have to mention a name of the particular text box. Uh, another one is a response, like how we have action tag, we have used forward. What is the forward? So, it will redirect your page to some other page. Likewise, we have a response parameter with the help of response object, we can also redirect to the particular page with the help of the method send redirect. We have to mention a URL or particular page. Okay. Then we have a set header. For example, if you, you just you may see in the particular website, there will be cache. What is a cache? It will be temporary storage of the particular page. The page data will be stored. For example, if you are login in a Gmail, your name is entered, then your password is entered. After the second day you are going to the same page, if you are typing the name, the name will be available in your text box. That is a auto field. So, how, how it is coming? The data what you are entered previously, it is available in cache. When you want to fill the particular data supposed to, they are not supposed to save in your cache. We have to restrict the cache. For example, if you for uh, some secured website, if you go for SBI, there is no need to save the cache. So, this kind of some restriction we can use avoiding st storing of cache. Then we can set the context type, the what is the, the particular page context we can set, whether it is an P, the PDF or whether it is an HTML or it is a document. So, we can set the context. Session. The, when you are developing the web based application, definitely you must have the session. Okay. We have to manage the session, that is a very important thing. This is the, for, the four way we can manage the session. The first one is the session objects. There is a predefined objects are available in your JSP, that is a session. With the help of that, we can set the attribute, we can get the attributes, and then we can make the make the particular thing destroy. Okay. Likewise, the second one is the cookies. What is the cookies? Like it will be temporarily stored in your browser or your the vendor system. Okay, it will not available in your server or somewhere, it will be available in your own system, that is the cookies. Then hidden fields, what is the hidden fields? The particular, for example, if you want to at the time of sending data through form, we can have the particular field as hidden, it will not visible in, visible to the user, but we can have some data in that field, we can transmit to another page, that is a hidden. Another one is the URL rewriting. What is the URL? You are writing. We can pass the data in URL. That is a URL rewriting. For example, I have given a session dot JSP. Okay. Sorry, session I am using session in JSP. How to set the session attributes? We have a, I already I said that we have a already we have session the that is a objects. With the help of that object we can set the particular attributes. With, we have we have two parameters. One is a name of the session, another one is the value of the session. The set, how, how to use the set is that, rec, sorry, session dot set attributes, we have to pass two values. One is the, first one is the name of the session, another one is the value, we are going to pass for the particular name. Here, what I have, say set dot set attributes, SES, DAL, I have passed the value. What is that value? Request dot get parameter the value which is passed from a previous page. Okay. Next, how to use the session variable? With the help of the name, we can get it in anywhere. For example, session dot get 
attribute get attributes we have to pass the name of the session then for removing your session we have to use remove attribute attribute name you have to mention the application object we can use the ap application object is already exist in your all jsp page with the help of that we can set the attribute as it is how you are setting in your session but the main difference session and application application is common for all the pages all the pages all the users if you go for session it will be restricted for the particular user user or particular session these are the reference you may get more information about jsp okay that's it about the jsp okay okay